Why, hello everybody, it's Joyce Selena, and I am introducing you to RimWorld. Yes, a whole new series. I am so excited to be playing this game. Um, I have been kind of a junkie of watching other people play it. I've actually played it on my own. Um, it, it is currently in beta, beta 18. So it's been in alpha for several years actually. Um, and so it's just been released on beta. You can find it on Steam. And uh, it is a colony simulator, as it says right there in the title, RimWorld, a colony simulator by Tyne and Sylvester. Um, so I am excited to play this and we're gonna just jump into it. Uh, now I don't know how long this series is gonna last. I have to tell you, with all the playing that I've done, I've never done extremely well. So I'm hoping it's live entertainment. <laughs> okay, so there's three different scenarios. We're, we're not gonna take the one that says ex, uh, difficult and we're certainly not gonna take the one called extra di difficult or, or we'll be here like 15 minutes. So we're gonna go with the classic room world experience of crash landed. So we have three crash landed survivors. The three of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to escape iPod to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. So we'll start with three people. Um, we'll get to choose uh, between some. And we have a few items to be able to help us not die right away. Uh, including uh, the map will go on. We'll have some ship chunk, which will turn into steel, some other extra steel, and some packaged survival meals so we don't die of hunger within the first day or two. Okay, so there's three different storytellers. Uh, the Cassandra Classic, so she's pretty typical. Um, she gets harder and harder as things go along, um, but that's your typical AI. Uh, there's Phoebe, Chillax, and this is more for um, colony builders. And I can tell you, I've died just playing Phoebe uh, Chillax, so this will be interesting. Uh, so she gives um, some more time. So in between different things that happen, you'll have time to build up your, uh, to kind of rebuild up, I should say, your colony or cure your colonists and... Um, uh, it's a pretty fun way of being able to build up your base. Uh, then we have Randy Random, who is just that. Um, he might give you, throw something at you that's really hard at the beginning. Um, he might take some time in between um, uh, events or whatever. So it's completely kind of up to him. So we're going to go with Cassandra Classic, and we're going to do some challenge. I mean, I'd like to have at least three episodes. Is that too much to ask? Three Maybe, okay. So we're gonna go with Cassandra. And then you, we can create a world. So I'm gonna do just vanilla. Since that's the server where a lot of my uh, viewers are from, we're gonna do just vanilla and see. So uh, you can randomize the seed. You can do the global coverage, and that means it's gonna be how much of the, uh, of the globe is covered with land. Uh, by doing 30%, it makes it easier to get around so this again is a kind of a how difficult how large is the world um so yeah it can take a very long time to generate an, an entire planet uh and so when you have events they might be on the other side of the world so by doing it smaller we're going to be closer to any um events that are outside of our colony uh we're going to keep the overall rainfall and temperature in the normal range and let's see what we get generating world and so we'll pick there's there's different types of biomes um, but one thing that was introduced in the last alpha perf, uh, previous to this release was the ability to um, do caravans so once we pick a place we're not stuck there through the whole game we can move around we can abandon colonies we can banish colonists uh, that get on our royal nerves if we want so I'm gonna go for something sort of in the middle and one of the reasons is because uh, you'd be able to, it, it, uh, seasons. The seasons will last longer, growing seasons, things like that. And so it is a little bit easier to manage food. And um, again, I'm, I'm trying not to die right away. You could, I mean, we could start way up here in the tundra. So like up here, desert area, very dry supports little life deserts can be hot or quite cold so this particular one 
gets an average summer temperature of 71 and an average winter temperature of negative four. I have it on Fahrenheit. You can actually switch this to Celsius, but I live in America. I have no context when I see things in Celsius. I did, it, no clue. 47 degrees, is that hot? Is that kind of hot? Is that really hot? Who knows? Uh, but here I'll be able to at least have it in my own context. And you'll see growing periods. So how many days out of the year um, that is available for actually growing things. So um, clearly going up there where there's very little in the way of trees, very little in the way of plant life, and um, very little in days available for growing. Also with it getting pretty cold, you lose animals. So winters are really harsh, especially in those colder temperatures, because uh, you don't have food to grow, you don't have much food to grow during the summer months, and then um, you don't have a lot of animals to kill in the winter months. So I wanna go with something that has kind of a main road. Uh, I want something that has some type of mountain, so large hills, that's always good. So here, we have a growing period of 30 out of 60 days, so that means half the time we can grow food. That's not bad. Is there anything a little bit more south? That's down here. Uh, I still want something with mountainy areas. This is mountainous. Well, I don't want huge mountains. Is there something smaller? Still mountainous. So large hills. Ah! I want to find something. Here, let's go over this way. Ah, see? So if you can tell when I zoom in, um, this is large hills. So there's, there's still this spot there that shows the hills, but it's not taking up a large portion. Like this is impassable. You couldn't get around very far. Uh, this is going to be mountainous, meaning when you get to the map, there's going to be like this huge mountain and you're going to end up having to do a lot of your building inside the mountain as opposed to doing buildings. So um, let's go with this one. Large hills, uh, granite and limestone. Interesting uh, for building. Average temperature is 72 degrees. So that's uh, winter temperature is 64. Summer temperature is 83, meaning we can get some um, heat waves that'll probably get us well into the hundreds, maybe 120. Um, so that'll get pretty hot. Uh, growing period year round. Well, that's a little bit too much. I don't want year round growing. That's like breaking the game. What's this one? Well, that's not near a road. See, I'm being very picky, aren't I? What's down here? Um, here, this is, no, that's not a road either. So there's these roads and then there's the waterways. Oh, uh, I don't think I want to do rainforest. That's going to be a whole lot of, um, whole lot of trees. What about here? What's this? Mountainous. No. What about nearby? Small hills. No. Mountainous. Oh, come on. Ah, there we go. Large hills. 40 out of 60 days. Oh, this is, this is it, folks. Uh, we're near, uh, what's this? A merchant's cave bandit camp down here. Great, I lost it. Which one was it? Was it this one? Terrain. Yes. Slate and limestone. That sounds good. So it gives you some information about the, uh, oh, that's our planet. And about the terrain. So large hills. Current movement time, that means I have no idea. What does that mean? I have no idea. You have to look it up. Winter movement time. Oh, probably how quickly you can move from one place to another or moving around. Uh, the from Probably from like here, this point to this point, if you were to do a caravan. Um, slate, elevation, average temperatures we talked about, rainfall. Animals can graze now. Yes, I have no idea. What, I guess maybe that there is enough uh, vegetation available for animals to graze. Average disease frequency. Disease is one of the um, events that can happen. And so you have to be prepared so your folks can come down with the flu. They can come down with malaria. Um, and then special features cave. I think this is it. Let's hit next. Oh, now this is the best part. This is our character creator. So we can select... Uh, different people to be um, in our colony and they have different characteristics so like right here shorty here I'm not interested this scratch means pain plus 10% she will be in a constant state of pain constant state of pain which will have a negative emotional buff debuff 
Uh, as well as then she has lost her, she has a scar on her left fourth toe that also causes her pain. So this, this stacks. So she's gonna be much uh, harder to keep happy. So not really great, uh, excited about that. Incapable of intellectual. She likes melee, likes cooking, and is pretty good at it. Um, but again, down here, she won't do any research for us. She is a teetotaler, meaning she doesn't like any of the chemicals, no, no smoke leaf, no, um, no beer, things like that. So she's, she, do, and she doesn't like when people around her do that. And so then she gives negative moodlet, uh, uh, to other people in their, in her conversations. She can, you know, maybe insult them or make a negative comment if they engage in any of, in any, in any of those activities. Uh, she is gay. So if she gets romantically, romantically linked, she will link with somebody of the same gender. And then she's pretty, which means that people uh, will have a positive uh, moodlet towards her, like a relationship. They'll have a positive relationship buff towards her because she's pretty. Um, yeah, but I don't think we're gonna take her. Uh, Nicolay, holy cow. No, I may be a little age ageist here, but at two cataracts, here he can't hear, he can't see, he's frail, which means he can't move very fast and he can't carry stuff very fast and he's got asthma yeah goodbye oh we can randomize or we send him away yeah goodbye we don't want him another thing you'll see relationships there might be a possibility like uh mark here is sisters his sister is helene so we could if we wanted to have mark and helene be uh, be here so that that would be a positive boostlet so they're gonna have a positive relationship because they like each other which is good. Not all siblings like each other. Trust me. I can tell you from firsthand experience. Um, yeah, so by having them together, they already have a, a positive boost, lit, a boost towards each other. But let's see, what are Mark's characteristics here? We already know we don't want Shorty, right? Yeah, Shorty, you're out of here. Okay, Mark, he's got a stab scar on his right hand. Um, so it's pain 2%, that's very little. So he'll, he'll probably be fine. Um, he's good at shooting and see he has a little flame next to it, which means that he has a passion or interest in that. Um, melee, he's got a burning passion for, so he's got two flames, which means that he'll learn it very fast and he gets uh, joy from doing that particular action. So we would probably have him be a melee guy, but really overall, he's kind of nice to have at the beginning. Um, with those traits. However, I am seeing something that tells me that Mark is out of here. He is incapable of skilled labor. He's incapable of caring, which means he won't do medicine on anyone. He's incapable of social, so he won't talk to anybody. He won't be a warden. And he's incapable of hauling. If you can't be capable of skilled labor, that's fine. That means I want you to haul stuff around my my colony. So he's not even capable of that. The scary thing is incapable of caring, where he, they can't do medicine. Oh my gosh. I, I guarantee he would be the last guy alive, and then some rat's going to come and attack him, and he's going to bleed out because he won't be able to put a Band-Aid on. So, Mark, you're out of here. Helene. Helene has no injuries. Not bad. She's incapable of intellectual, which means she won't do research. She's incapable of firefighting, which concerns me, well, because she's a pyromaniac. So she likes to start fires. When she gets upset, you know how she takes it out on the colony? When she gets upset, she starts fires all over the place. And since we're probably gonna start by building with wood, that may not be great, but I might be able to live with it because eventually we're gonna build out a stone. Uh, but yeah, so when she breaks, she'll start things on fire. Uh, but she has a green thumb, which is great. So she's got a plus to growing. Um, but she's a slow poke. So you'll see the movement speed of negative two. So a little concern. She does like growing though. And that is very, very important on RimWorld, especially when you start out. If you can start out with somebody who's already good at it, which is a level seven out of 20, not bad, and then has a burning passion for it. It means uh, that they're gonna be able to grow um, more crops, better crops. They'll be able to plant them faster. Um, they'll be able to harvest them and um, get more um, uh, 
actual yield from when they when they uh, when they cut things down. Also for tree cutting. So if I suggest that if I need trees to be cut, uh, Helene here would be great at chopping them down quickly. So that's actually pretty good. Plus she's good at medicine, which in the beginning you don't need um, you don't need a lot of people to do medicine, but you need whoever's doing the medicine to be able to do it really well. Because uh, clearly we're going to have injuries when we have um, our first raids of, uh, of bandits or pirates or whatever, and fighting the animals. Uh, we're going to want to be able to heal ourselves up to maintain the colony. So that's really good. And then animals at a 10. And then she also has a passion for that one. Meaning if we want to tame animals, um, which is great. There's certain, there's certain animals that we'll be able to haul. There are certain animals that if we want to do a caravan, we're going to want. So this is really important to have. So I'm liking Helene, despite her kind of negative stuff over here. Uh, and her melee is good. So she's going to be able to help us out um, in, those, in the beginning. And she's going to grow even stronger. So let's get her backstory. She's a medical assistant. So she was born during a catastrophic war in which both sides used napalm extensively. She grew up helping her parents in the infirmary, treating the cascade of horrific burns from the battlefields. She was left with a lifelong fear of fire. So that's why the firing, firefighting is disabled. Interesting that she's a pyromaniac, that you would think that she would not want anything to do with fire. So a um, paranoid pyromaniac, that's interesting. Her medicine is plus five because of the help she did helping um, the people, her parents in the infirmary. And then a message carrier. On a, a medieval world, the fastest way to send a message is to give it to somebody on a horse and hope they survive the journey. Helene was that somebody. So melee plus three and animals plus four. Researching was disabled. Crafting, she produces drugs at a drug lab. Drug lab is disabled, so she won't make drugs for us, which is fine. I'm not I might do the smoke leaf, but I really don't use the, the drugs. Uh, and she is 52 years old in her biological years. Interesting. Okay, so now we have white. Incapable of intellectual and crafting. Wait a second. I'm starting to get concerned here. He is a night owl, which is not bad. Because uh, it's nice to be able to have somebody working at all time. Um, he is also a nudist. But my problem here now is that he's good at animals. And so is Helene. Now, he's better at, than Helene. Um, and he's also good at growing. He's even better than Helene. So I wouldn't want both of them. So now I have to decide which of these two would I want. Because really, I wouldn't want both of them. So I am thinking, oh, his mining's good too. I am thinking, I'm okay with not crafting and without the intellectual. And I'd prefer to not have... The pyromaniac. So Helene, you're out of here. Razdik. Radzik, sorry, Razdik. Oh, he's also incapable of violent. Holy cow, I don't need that. He's a pyromaniac charity worker. What kind of combination is that? So he's gonna start fires uh, all over the place. And because he is a charity worker, he will not do any violence, meaning he will not pick up a gun and start shooting. He will not pick up a club or a piece of wood and start hitting things, even if he's being attacked. Like, so a wolf attacks him, he's not gonna do anything. He's gonna stand around, somebody help me, I'm being attacked, but I won't hit it. I mean, this is, I bet you he takes spiders and cups them in his hand really gently and then puts them outside, which is not what I do to spiders. So, mm, oh, sorry, I hit my mic. Uh, yeah, so Razdik, I can't even say his name. Radzik, you're out of here. We're having some problems here. We're getting, we're kicking out everybody. Nikolai, we already talked to Nikolai. Nikola, oh, Nikolai's definitely out. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have to start randomizing. Klob. Who's Klob? Andrew Klob Klobucher. A wreckage explorer and an herbalist. So shooting is four. That's good. So especially if we keep white... Wait a second, I didn't want white. Did I want white? Yeah, I did. Because I wanted his growing. I lose track already. So, white here is going to be good at the melee. So now we have Klob is good at the firefighting. I mean, not the firefighting, at the shooting. Um, she is volatile, 
which means that it'll be easier for her to break. Uh, creepy breathing, which means no one wants to talk to her. Anytime she talks to anybody, it's automatic negative moodlet, negative moodlet to them. Those are like relationships. Yeah, she's, she's gonna, it, no one's gonna like her. Uh, and then super immune. Ooh, I've never seen that before. So immunity gain speed is 30%. That's fantastic. Plus she has good medicine. So, um, and she has pretty good cooking along with white. Um, she has a passion for construction, which is great. Uh, yeah. I, and look, she's got intellectual. So definitely, I think we're going to keep club. And since we've been through, have we seen Hicks? Yes. No, we haven't seen Hicks. Let's move Hicks up here. Hicks is a music lover and a sculptor, incapable of dumb labor. I already don't like him. Not capable of crafting, not capable of co cooking. What's the point? You can't do much anything when I first start out something. So, okay, we're done. You guys, hearing loss and incapable, no. Uh, no, I, we want somebody who's healthy. No, not a pyromaniac. No, I don't. No, no, I don't want hearing loss. Oh, this ought to be interesting. Grump, a sickly child. As a child, Grump suffered a rare disease. Quarantined in a research hospital, he had minimal human contact and got a little, little physical exercise. In the sterile hospital environment, however, he became very familiar with science and medicine. Housemate. As an adult, Grump kept house and cared for children while his spouse worked. So he's better at medicine, cooking, and crafting. Interesting. He's, so he's not incapable of anything. He's neurotic, which is good and bad. So he works faster. He likes to have things squared away. He will work harder than most to attain this state of affairs, but his nerves can get the better of him. So he breaks a little bit sooner. Chemical interest. So if I don't have the drugs around, it won't affect him. But if there are drugs around and he breaks, he's gonna like go after the smoke weed and the next thing I'm gonna go and find out that he's high. Or he'll binge on beer. Or he'll get addicted to something else. So uh, I think we can live with that. And then beautiful. Gramp is exceptionally beautiful with an exotic yet familiar facial structure and an arresting gaze. People are attracted to him before he even opens his mouth. Interesting. He hasn't practiced very much, though, because his social is at zero, and he doesn't have a passion for it. I'm not thrilled, but it's one of those things where it's better the devil you do know than the devil you don't. So he's he's got a passion or interest in some things. He doesn't have a... or he has an interest in things, but he doesn't have a passion, like a flaming, burning passion for anything. And he's good at the medicine, but he's not great at anything else. But overall, we have a pretty good balance. So if you look at the team skills overall, um, I think it's doable. I think my only concern is that I don't have somebody who is passionate about cooking. But I think we're gonna go with it. The other thing we can do is we can change names. So we've got two males and a female. Well, hmm. Let me see, let me see. I've been told that there's a few of you on the Just Vanilla server that don't mind if I use your name. So I'm gonna go with the stack of people that have so far given me a thumbs up. And the first one is Omelet. Hello, Omelet. So you are now Omelet. And of course, Joy Selena has to be somewhere, right? So Joy Selena. A wreckage explorer and herbalist. My creepy breathing. <sighs> yeah, that's about right. Um, and then Grump is going to be the king of the server. Yahtzee. Okay, and with that, we are ready to start.